Good evening, Volk Mom here. I was talking with a couple of friends today, and they reminded me that there are still so many of our women who are unwilling to breastfeed their babies. I just want to make one thing very clear. The most important thing we can do as women in our lives is to bear children and be great mothers. And that is an extremely important contribution we can make. In fact, today, with government subsidized and cultural programming in the form of TV shows, ads, commercials, and articles promoting body positive and endless nihilistic free choices for women, being a great mother and wife is truly radical. To be great mothers, we nurture and nourish. Breastfeeding is vital to the health and development of our children. It is feminism toxicity that tells women it's their choice whether or not to breastfeed, just like it's their choice if they want to forego the natural biological order of life and skip mothering altogether, spend their lives in pursuit of careers, competing for men's corporate jobs, paying debilitating student loans. It's their choice to skip marriage or ruin the ones they have. Some women truly cannot breastfeed due to serious health problems. I've known at least a couple, and they mourn for the loss of that special connection. But those cases are extremely rare. Breastfeeding should not be a choice or a decision to make. It should be second nature. It's natural. It is the foundation of a healthy childhood. Can women set aside their whims and choices for a moment and just do what we know is right? Google reasons not to, and the first suggestions are reasons not to get married, have a baby, and have kids. Hmm. One of the main reasons women aren't breastfeeding is because they need to go back to work after the baby is born. With no paid maternity leave, I can see why. But If we do not absolutely have to go back to work after the baby is born, then we shouldn't. Even if it is a sacrifice of income, we should be looking at how we can budget to keep mothers at home and breastfeeding. Savings can be had by skipping formula and daycare and private school tuitions and homeschooling instead. Cooking at home versus eating out, secondhand shopping, inexpensive local retreats such as family camping and fishing trips versus expensive vacations. It is so much better for the family and the folk for the mother to stay at home, cooking, cleaning, growing the garden, and breastfeeding the babies. It doesn't have to be lonely either. Today there's even an app for mom's meetup groups. If the second income is needed, then mom should find a way to work from home. Staying home with the children is well worth the effort and sacrifice. I realize that in a society that is designed to make traditional life difficult, that this simply isn't possible for some. But for many, traditional family structure is more possible than they're willing to admit. I just weaned my youngest child, and I can say with experience that not only is breastfeeding advantageous for the baby's health, but it is also very convenient for the mother. When the child is hungry, the nourishment is immediate. There's no need to heat bottles, which means less crying. As they begin to crawl and walk, bumps, bonks, and bruises are instantly soothed by mother's milk. When the child is ill or experiencing any sort of trauma, nursing is the most healing remedy. The very special bonding that occurs when breastfeeding the newborn is immense and the importance cannot be overstated. Even the American Academy of Pediatrics states that breastfeeding is the healthiest for babies and why wouldn't we want to readily give our best to our children that which we are naturally equipped to give? From Guide to Breastfeeding by Ina Gaskins The composition of breast milk varies from mother to mother, and the composition of a given mother's milk varies according to her baby's needs. This means that if your baby is born prematurely, your milk will automatically adjust itself to contain the most advantageous mix of nutrients for him at this particular stage of development. 
No matter how many claims a manufacturer of substitute milk formula makes about its similarities to breast milk, any substitute milk, no matter what brand, is quite different from human milk and is an inferior food source for human babies. The mother's milk is superior whether we're talking about the baby's growth or development and all other short and long-term outcomes. Breastfeeding for at least six months helps protect the baby's digestive tract, reducing the risk of developing allergies. Mother's milk contains living cells and is specifically designed to nourish your baby and to protect him against bacteria and infections. Newborns can use all the protection they can get. Holding your sweet little bundle in your arms, nursing him, looking into his new little eyes, seeing him see you, and hearing those precious little gulps and cooing sounds, knowing you're giving him your best and all of your love is one of the most fulfilling, beautiful, natural things in the world. And I would argue that it is an important rite of passage in a woman's life to give your sustenance to your offspring, to literally feed them from your own milk and watch them grow, there is no substitute for this realness. Many commercial formulas contain sugar and soy, a known hormone disruptor. Baby's digestive systems are still continuing to develop after birth. Feeding these formulas exposes babies to higher risks of infection and other health problems such as meningitis, diarrhea, ear infections, obesity, and even asthma. Breastfeeding babies are healthier and tend to have a higher IQ. Again, from Guide to Breastfeeding, we read, A study involving about 300 premature babies who were too small to suckle compared those given breast milk with those who received formula through a tube. When the two groups were IQ tested at the age of 8 years and the mother's social and educational status were taken into account, the breastfed children scored significantly higher on the IQ tests than their formula-fed counterparts did. Obviously, breastfeeding is not the only factor contributing to IQ, but it is worth noting. Loving touch that comes along with holding and interacting with your baby also contributes to their overall well-being. Babies need more than milk to thrive. Breastfeeding is also good for the mother's health. After labor and birth, nursing helps release the natural hormone oxytocin from the pituitary gland. This causes smaller uterine contractions, or after pains, which help shrink the uterus back to its original size. Breastfeeding right after birth also reduces late postpartum hemorrhaging. Exclusive, unrestricted breastfeeding delays the return of menses in most women and helps us return to our pre-pregnancy weight. Women who don't breastfeed have increased risk of breast cancer and ovarian cancer and postmenopausal osteoporosis. There is so much more to say on this very important topic. I want all of us to encourage our sisters to breastfeed. It nourishes the baby, the offspring, the future of our folk. If your family lacks an OB, pediatrician, or doctor that is not supportive of breastfeeding, then find someone who is. Aside from rare, serious health risk to the mother or baby, there is no good reason not to breastfeed. It's not always easy for new moms and babies to get the proper technique. If she's having trouble, find a nurse or lactation consultant to help right away. There's plenty of information and resources out there. If you're starting a family, make sure your hospital staff or midwife or doula can be available to help you get started with nursing within the first hour after birth. And if trouble persists, check for a tongue tie. This is a very common but very simple to cure ailment with newborn's tongues that can prevent them from getting a good latch on the breast and nursing to fill their little tummies. Insist the nurses check to make sure that the baby doesn't have a tongue tie. Most of all, 
I hope anyone listening to this feels inspired to learn more about the benefits of